In this lecture, we're going to provide basic introduction of MIS. I'm Minder Chen. I'm Professor of Management Information System at Martin V. Smith School of Business and Economics, CSU Channel Island. MIS can be described based on management, information, and system, the three aspects. First of all, you have to understand the business function and process within an organization and how people react to technology, to information system, in order to understand how we should develop and deploy information system to support user within an organization to perform their process, business process and function. Information, there's two part of it. Uh, first is the content. Um, we can describe the content based on three category data information or knowledge we will get to this um, later and second is the processing part of it and how we create gather data and how we store the, the data that we have captures and how we organize it and how we consolidate and condense the data that we have stored in our system and eventually how we filter, sort, and deliver the information to the right person in order to share the information to help them to do their job. On the system side, um, we're talking about information system and information technology. And in the next slide, we're going to use a simple input process output and storage model to describe the system perspective of information system. You can also study the general system theory to understand how system thinking may help us to understand how information systems work in an organization. And here I list a few references uh, from Wikipedia uh, for your additional study. Let's look at um, this diagram. Um, it's really based on the IPO model, input, process, and output. We have data coming from data provider. Uh, they are the data source. Usually data may be triggered by some business event, such as a customer's order. And the data will be captured and eventually need to be processed. The data will be processed based on some business logic that we have encoded in our program. For most of the information system, there will be a data storage component. Uh, data storage, there's two part of it. One is the main memory. Uh, main memory usually come with um, your motherboard um, on your computer um, that would run your program and store some data that your program need to use immediately. And there's also so-called secondary storage, like your hard drive, your floppy disk, your DVD, your external hard drive, etc. Uh, they can store much larger amount of data. Uh, the speed is a little bit slower, um, but the storage size will be much larger than the typical main memory. For instance, main memory for a typical laptop computer can be four gigabyte and the secondary storage can be 500 gigabyte or you can buy the um, $150 you can actually purchase two terabytes of external portable hard drive. Uh, one terabyte is about a thousand gigabyte. And a lot of data that we capture in business will be processed eventually store in the data storage in the external and secondary storage and it will be organized there and when time come that we need to use information then we would use the processing unit a program to retrieve the data and generate the necessary output to deliver to the user within the organization. It can be a department, can be individual user. Uh, in general, it's the consumer of the information. There are two other components in this model. One is the control component. Control component is to ensure the quality of our information system. For instance, we want to make sure the data coming to the system will be of high quality. We don't want 
the so-called garbage in, garbage out, so-called GIGO phenomena. With good quality data coming into the system, then there's more trustworthy of the data they will produce. Procedure is basically the manual steps that the user need to follow in order to use the information system. It is considered part of the information system. And for each of the information system, we need to define its boundary. Uh, outside the boundary, we could have other information system users that we need to interact with. The user could be someone even outside the company, our customer, our supplier. And defining the boundary allowed us to scope the system's size properly. And certainly there's a lot of advancement in terms of hardware and software to help us to develop information system. For instance, we used to use keyboard to input data. Now we can use touch panel, we can use scanner, and we can use barcode readers, RFID reader to capture data uh, to enter the data into our system with um, higher accuracy. The output usually uh, is the printout, but it can be displayed on the screen. And also we can just easily send it out as an email as an output to its target user. Understand this model can help us to understand various components within information system to help us to design the system to better understand how we should manage information system. The whole purpose of building information system is to provide good information to help us to make better decisions. And so we need to really ask ourselves, what are the characteristics of good information? Uh, first of all, uh, good information is accurate. And also it will be delivered to us in a timely manner. The time when we need to use it to make decision, it will be uh, made available and in real time fashion, hopefully. And the information also has to be relevant. Um, relevant means that it will provide us not just the data, but also the broader context to help us to understand what, what information mean to us related to the decisions that we have, uh, we have to make. And the fourth characteristic is just sufficient. What does that mean? Um, right now in, in the modern society, we, we're not lack of information. We are actually overloaded with information. Uh, try to understand and consume those information um, takes a lot of time. So by providing just sufficient, the right amount of information to help us to make decision uh, can make the decision process much more efficient to avoid the so-called information overloading problem. So just give us as much information as possible is not considered a good characteristic. Just sufficient is. The fifth characteristic is that a good information should uh, be considered worth its cost. Okay? We always have to bear in mind that um, Capture, stored, and processing information uh, cost us. And so we need to actually justify those information processing activity with its benefit, the benefit that it would provide to us. Uh, if you ask the user whether they need a piece of information, most likely they, they're going to say yes. Okay. However, if you say, well, if you say yes, then it's going to cost you. You have to do extra work, and you have to pay me more money in order to develop this additional feature. They may think about it and decide, well, in that case, I may not want it. Okay, So always bring the cost issue to your discussion when you discuss information system. And certainly don't forget about the benefit information uh, will bring to us. To summarize this, we can state it that um, information system or good information can help us to deliver just enough accurate and relevant and timely information to the right persons or organization unit 
uh, to help them to make better decisions. Okay. Just try to emphasize that um, information do cost something. Um, we use Google and assume it's free, but um, some studies show that um, just do a simple Google search may cost us um, a fraction of kilowatts energy, which is about a human body will burn in 10 seconds. It's not a lot, but think about millions of Google search that uh, around the world people um, have are conducting. Um, it it adds up. Okay, if it's not costing us, it will cost someone. It will cost Google. It will cost um, even our internet service provider to transport the data. This is an advanced version um, on the quality of information, uh, which expand on what we just discussed. And we categorize the information quality into four categories, intrinsic IQ, accessibility IQ, contextual IQ, and representational IQ. Uh, here we see some familiar term that we just discussed, like uh, intrinsically information, good information should be accurate, should be objective, should be believable, should have a good reputation. When you do a Google search, um, those high-ranking search results is considered with good or, or relevant information that has good reputation. And when we discuss a Google case study, we would uh, refer back to this reputational um, reputation issue again. Accessibility means we want to make sure that the information is easy to access. But on the other spectrum, we need to concern about the security. If something is too easy for everybody to access, it may not be secure. So we have to kind of balance the need for easy to access and the security slash privacy of the information that we have. The con contextual aspect of information quality means it will be relevant, it will add value to our decision making, it will provide us in a timely manner. And for completeness, it, it is very difficult to have a complete information when we need to make a decision because there's a cost in, involved and it's almost impossible to have so-called complete information. However, whether we have enough information um, such that we can make a reasonable, high quality decision, I think is the issue here. And the, the um, amount of data doesn't mean we have to have huge amount of data, but just the right amount of data again. The representational IQ, um, basically talking about the user interface, the presentation, um, how we present the data such that it's easy to understand. It is very concise. Uh, people can grasp the situation by looking at the business graph. Uh, or even the pictures, a diagram, or a list, a table of the data being uh, listed. And we want to make sure there's a consistency in our representation, which make it easier for the user to, to make comparison. Uh, this is actually based on a Sloan Review article, and, and you can refer to it um, in this following link. I'm not sure whether you have seen this diagram before. Um, it may be hard for you to to read. Uh, this is actually um, the Napoleon's invasion of Russia in in 1812. Um, this is almost like a, a map um, from France launching the invasion. Um, and eventually to Moscow, but with a retreat. And in this diagram, uh, we tr the the creator of the diagram tried to um, try to incorporate a lot of information in this single diagram. I'm going to switch to the next slide to just show you a little bit easier for us to read. Uh, that the thickness of the line 
is referring to the size of the troop. For instance, here we have 40,000 troops to start with, and then it's gradually coming down and reducing to about 100,000. Uh, on the way back, the retreat eventually end up with only uh, one of a hundredth um, troop, which is 4,000 um, end up come back. And in this diagram, also use color coding um, to represent the inva uh, invasion route and the retreat route in green here. The temperature is shown here. It's below zero for sure. And it's kind of related to when this temperature occurred. Um, I think by the time the, the, the final retreat coming back to France, it's it's in December uh, the seventh here. Uh, it's way below zero. Okay, so uh, we have temperatures, we have day, we have the size of troop, we have the route. So there's uh, multiple dimensional information being captured in this beautifully drawn diagram. And this is a good example of. Um, infographics as we call it. We used to say a picture is worth a thousand words. Um, this diagram definitely show the, the miserable retreat. Uh, the snow on the ground, people are dying, the soldiers were tired, Napoleon's even the horse is has its head down. So um, you probably notice and will know from this picture it's probably the bad winter weather in Russian uh, is probably one major external factor that caused the retreat.